Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining me today for the first Leadership Dialogue uh, for 2023. Uh, I'm Wright Lasseter. I'm the Chief Executive Officer for Common Spirit Health. And as I join you today, I am no longer in the role as the board chair for the American Hospital Association. Uh, that honor goes to my colleague and good friend, John Huppert, who is the president and CEO of the Grady Healthcare System in Atlanta, Georgia. Hello, John, how are you today? I'm great, how are you, right? Wonderful, it's great to be with you. Um, <clears throat> as we get started today, uh, John and I um, will see this as a little bit of a, of a transition in, uh, in the leadership dialogue session. And so we sort of thought that today would be a great opportunity to hear insights from John. Uh, John, uh, before we get into your role as the uh, board chair for the American Hospital Association, we just note that John has led uh, Grady as its CEO since 2011. Uh, and John has worked uh, incredibly hard to improve uh, health of the uh, community that he serves uh, in Metro Atlanta and beyond, uh, providing high quality care, uh, providing comprehensive health care in a compassionate, uh, culturally competent way. Uh, and under, under John's leadership, the health system has uh, consistently uh, improved and, and blossomed, uh, reinventing itself uh, in order to best meet the needs of uh, the patients in the communities uh, he serves, uh, focusing very intently on uh, clinical excellence, on innovative research, and on uh, progressive uh, medical education and, and training. Um, Grady is known as uh, one of the leading uh, public academic health systems in the country with uh, nearly 8,000 team members. Uh, it maintains its commitment to both the underserved um, counties of uh, Fulton and DeKalb, as well as Metro Atlanta, uh, providing um, critical health care um, and access at its main hospital, uh, Grady Hospital, as well as at uh, several uh, neighborhood uh, community uh, health and specialty clinics. Um, John's organization has physicians on faculty um, at some of the leading organizations that, that you all have heard of, uh, including both uh, Emory University and uh, Morehouse uh, Medical Schools. Uh, Grady provides uh, patient care in Atlanta and across the state of Georgia with comprehensive care um, across a wide range of specialties, including uh, cancer care, uh, cardiac and vascular care, uh, neurology, trauma care, uh, and not to mention the more routine uh, and preventive services that that uh, that every community needs. Uh, in addition to Don, to John's day job, uh, John stepped into the role as the HA chair um, at the beginning of of this month of January, and uh, has already ably led our association. And we are um, grateful to have John at the helm of the board of trustees uh, and serving. Um, so my original plan was to have John uh, join me in December for our leadership dialogue, uh, but our schedules uh, didn't quite align uh, mostly with, with my travel uh, schedule. So I, I convinced him to join uh, in his first leadership dialogue session, and uh, I wanted just to join uh, today to, to both provide John uh, with uh, the official pass of, of the baton and also a welcome. And I would just say that um, John and I have known each other for quite a while. Um, and so this is a real pleasure for me, uh, one, to, to support John in his role as chair for 2023, uh, someone who has been a longtime friend uh, and, and colleague. And so again, John, I just wanna say um, thanks very much for, for joining today. And, um, and, and more importantly, thanks for your uh, entire your uh, significant leadership for for now over three decades um, to uh, to healthcare across the United States. Well, thank you, Wright, and thank you for those kind words. It's really hard to believe, as I'm sure you would agree, that 30 plus years has flown by since we were, as we say, baby administrators in Dallas, Texas. Um, and I want to thank you for joining me as I transition into the role of board chair. You've been a great mentor, and I will take any tips you have. Um, also, I'm greatly excited about the chance to speak with colleagues and other health industry leaders 
to listen and learn from others in the field as we battle the challenges in front of us, but also continue our journey of transformation and innovation on behalf of the patients and communities we serve. So, you know, for our viewers, um, you may remember that when the AHA first launched uh, this discussion series back in 2020, when the pandemic first began, uh, my predecessors, uh, Mindy Estes and Rod Hockman, um, we've all enjoyed the opportunity to host uh, insightful and valuable discussions with uh, healthcare experts uh, from across the country. Uh, John, I hope you'll enjoy these conversations as much as I did. Uh, it was a great opportunity to meet new colleagues and to to learn from them and to understand uh, what amazing things they're doing uh, in their community and their organization and uh, to think about how you could bring some of those lessons back uh, to your own organization. Uh, so, so as we get started today, uh, let me just kick off the conversation uh, with a question. Um, and, um, you know, as we think about um, the calendar turning from 2022 into 2023 and we begin a new year, um, just let me just ask you about goals that you have for the upcoming year. Um, are there priority areas that you um, hope to focus on? Um, are there things that uh, that uh, as you hopefully got a little bit of time to relax and refresh over the holidays that would cause you to to uh, set priorities for the year. So, so why don't you just share a little bit of that with, uh, with the audience? Well, thanks, right? Um, as you know, AHA's strategic plan sets forth five strategic objectives that will guide the association's work as we advance health in America. And all five of these are critical to our forward movement. Number one, providing better care and greater value ensuring the financial stability of hospitals and health systems, which has really become a front and center issue this past year, um, enhancing public trust and confidence in hospitals and health systems, addressing workforce challenges near, far, and, and now. Um, and as everyone on this uh, uh, video knows, we're all dealing with significant challenges around workforce. And the fifth is to improve the healthcare consumer experience. Embedded within those strategies are priorities like building more equitable health care. We here at Grady spend a significant amount of our time researching and addressing equity in health care uh, and addressing behavioral health needs with focus and transparency. Those are both issues that COVID amplified, making each a core focus for hospitals across the country. But what I really see as a focus is we must um, get laser focused on our workforce. This has been one of the most challenging times in staffing, but it goes beyond numbers. It also means thinking of provider and staff well-being and quality of life. If we are going to improve patient experience, we have to improve the staff experience. You don't get one without the other. People are at the center of our care and we need programs and support systems to make sure um, our workforce feels safe and appreciated. Um, and one final point to your question, as we are focused on the more emergent needs of our field that have really come during this quote, post pandemic year, we also have to do the hard work of delivering better care and greater value. Envisioning new payment models, new care models will be the key to our future success. And as I speak about the year ahead, I'm going to flip the coin as I think we would be remiss not to look back and reflect on the past year um, with Wright's term as the chair. Consider what has worked, what has not, what we have learned and how we can continue to evolve the care we provide to better meet the changing needs of our patients. So Wright, question for you. As you look back on the past year, I will ask for many reflections or key takeaways what have we learned as a field that we can do differently or do better moving forward? You know, John, I think that um, one of the things that I've said to uh, colleagues who asked me about my experiences um, as board chair is that um, you get an opportunity, an awesome opportunity to really um, interact with, with our field um, in a pretty comprehensive way and understand 
um, not only challenges people are facing, but but more importantly, how they're overcoming them. Um, I think as I look back on on last year, um, it'll be another indication, first and foremost, that um, um, despite the the challenges of of our COVID time, um, our field is um, is resilient. Our field perseveres, um, and I think that um, particularly last year when we faced really severe workforce challenges that we had not seen, you know, frankly, in in most of our 30 plus year uh, careers, what I what I saw was that our organizations um, began to think differently about solving problems that that weren't necessarily new, but were exacerbated by by the, the COVID uh, pandemic, as you as you highlighted. Um, and what we what I think we saw was that our our organizations um, dug deeper to to one communicate to our team members that we care and that um, and that leadership and organizations are focused on on um, pouring back into them so that they can pour back into our patients uh, and pour back in the communities that we serve. Um, last year, I think I, I also learned something that I hadn't been exposed to at least as deeply previously, and that is how innovative and resourceful our rural health communities are. Mm-hmm. Um, having opportunity to spend with rural healthcare leaders throughout last year was something that um, that was a priority of the AHA and a priority of mine, and and so I got an opportunity um, through through um, more than one convening last year to really understand how well the um, the rural healthcare um, sector within our field um, um, delivers innovative approaches to um, to challenges that sometimes we forget about when we're serving urban and suburban communities, and so so an, another. Um, uh, another takeaway from from last year, and then the last thing that I would say is that um, when you serve as the board chair, the other thing you get to see is um, how the leaders who serve on the HA board, how much they care about our field, and how much they how much time and effort <clears throat> they put into uh, doing the work of 5,000 hospitals and health systems across America to, to reinforce uh, messaging. To tell our story and to provide support to a field that um, that that needs it. Absolutely, thank you for that. And another question: As you are well aware, um, two of the most pressing current issues are workforce challenges um, and mounting financial pressure on hospitals and health systems. I do want to try and end on a positive note, and so I'll ask you for your thoughts on creative approaches or solutions to these challenges. Um, your health system, Common Spirit, has been doing some very innovative work around those things. And are there are there some approaches or solutions you'd like to share? You know, so I'll mention a couple of things. You know, first and foremost, uh, we know that when we think about workforce challenges, um, <clears throat> we know that um, that there's no silver bullet that it's going to require a multitude of strategies. Um, we know we need some strategies that are focused on the pipeline. Uh, we need some focuses that uh, some strategies that are focused on on uh, recruitment and some strategies focused on retention, um, particularly around pipeline. You know, we are very aggressively focused on creating what we expect uh, by early next year will be the largest nursing residency uh, program in the, in the country. And I think that we all acknowledge that. Uh, nursing training within the schools of nursing then requires uh, uh, on-site uh, focus in our delivery systems to prepare our nurses um, uh, most acutely to be able to deliver on their education. Uh, and so we're very focused on creating uh, nursing residency programs that um, that we hope will uh, will bolster the training done within our nursing schools um, and will provide um, and efficient. Uh, I won't say accelerate it because I don't want to ever suggest that we're short circuiting the process, but it, but an efficient and effective way um, to allow our nursing graduates to be able to hit the ground running and be able to deliver the care that that's needed and to to work at the you know proverbial top of their license um, to to uh, provide support. So we say that's one thing that we're very very focused on. You know, as a large organization that that serves uh, uh, 21 states, we also believe that we have an opportunity uh, by creating a national uh, internal nursing agency 
that we can provide options for nurses who might want to travel, who might want to to serve patients in different locales, um, to not have to leave their employer, to not have to leave the leave uh, sort of the what what I'll call the umbrella of of, of uh, not for profit healthcare delivery systems who who care about them as individuals um, on a on a long term basis, not have to leave our employment if they if they want to have opportunities to. Uh, to serve patients in different communities around the country. And so we're excited about our our national uh, internal nursing agency approach that we're working on. Um, and then we're certainly excited about our ability to create virtual care hubs um, where we can leverage again the innovation that that our care teams can bring um, and be able to take the burden off uh, some of our uh, in-house folks with uh, with virtual care. Um, hubs that will allow uh, nurses to provide support um, to our caregivers who are delivering who are delivering uh, firsthand, you know, on the ground service, and to do that in a way that that hopefully creates uh, not only efficient uh, staffing and efficient deployment of of, of clinical oversight, but also uh, drives our focus on delivering the best quality and, and the safest care to our patients. Thank you for that and. Three very creative um, and really effective tactics that Wright and his team have developed um, that I think a lot of people could share. And I really want to draw attention to your comment about um, nursing residency programs. Um, we began to talk to the nursing programs um, across the Southeast. And, you know, oftentimes we assume that the problem with increasing class sizes is faculty. But what we found out was it was clinical sites for training their nurses. And right. so we formed a, a partnership with one of the local universities here in Atlanta. Um, and by becoming their clinical training site and basing their residency here, um, providing them with simulation capability here on our right. campus, we've been able to increase their enrollment um, fourfold. And so I think I, I would I would ask that as our field takes a look at what's possible, um, the more we can open up our doors to the training of nurses um, and providing those clinical training sites, the better off we're all going to be. Yeah, you so know, lastly, I absolutely agree. Absolutely agree, John. Thank you. Shane. Yeah. So lastly, tell us what you are most excited about. What makes you the most proud when you think about the hospital field? You know, I, I have to go back to um, to purpose. You know, I think that um, what makes me most excited about um, spending the last thirty plus years um, in this field and and going forward is um, is purpose, is mission. It's the fact that um, we have uh, so many organizations that care so deeply about their communities um, and will align their their organizational purpose their mission the why they exist um, and hopefully align that carefully with the the personal missions of of the team members that do the work inside their organizations and then we'll wrap that around values um, that that are unique to, to each organization but are but are responsive to what their communities expect from them and what their boards and organizations want to deliver and how they want to show up and so I would tell you that that, that continues to to be the thing that, that that gets me waking up in the morning excited, um, which is that we're making an impact that is um, important and necessary um, to deliver health and well-being across the communities that that our field serves um, in our country, and and that's what will continue to sort of fuel my furnace. Um, and then as a leader, um, you know what what connects me is is how you focus on that within your own organization and. And the fact that we've had the privilege of doing that for our field by serving the, the American Hospital Association is, is obviously um, uh, something that, that I look back on extremely fondly. Well, I couldn't agree with you more around um, creating within our environment the values. Um, and as you said it, how we show up um, and how we show up is what will make the difference to our patients and our providers and our staff. Yeah. Um, so, right, I want to thank you for joining me today and for the official passing of the baton. You and I could certainly keep chatting all day, but we'll be respectful of our viewers' time. So, right, on behalf of the AHA and the entire field, thank you for your leadership in 2022. 
and also for joining me today. Any discussion with you is, of course, always a valuable one. And again, my thanks to all of you for finding the time to listen. I will be back next month for another Leadership Dialogue.